Let me make sure the recording has started. Okay, the recording has started. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for attending our telepracticing session for August the 28th. Um, we have two guest speakers, um, Rhea Dyer and Sally Woodward. And um, we are delighted that they are helping us. They will be providing monthly telepracticing sessions for you. These sessions will be recorded and available on the telepracticing team site. And before we get started, I see someone still needs to mute their mic. Um, so we, um, we can't, don't know how to thank Sally and Rhea and then Annie, who's the OT and Rhea's sister. Uh, for all of your support, I don't know what we would be doing otherwise. So, um, thank you so much, and we're going to go ahead and start. All right. So, um, if you attended our telepracticing series in the spring, uh, things were a little more basic, and you can uh, access those. I believe that most of them are recorded and posted. But for the series that we do this fall and the next coming spring, we're going to get uh, a little a little bit more into the nitty gritty. And we're going to talk about some specific uh, practices or opportunities or techniques uh, that you can use when providing virtual therapy. So um, I've done a few of the kind of teletherapy kind of 101, you know, introduction to teletherapy. I think I've done two of those now, but I have a couple of slides here. We're just going to really kind of gloss over kind of an in review. Um, I went over some equipment needs. Uh, you can find these in either of the previous presentations too, but um, these are your basic equipment needs in terms of providing teletherapy. You obviously need a computer um, and you don't have to have an external microphone or headphones, but it will kind of improve the microphone clarity. Uh, document camera is also optional, but it does, you know, kind of help things sometimes if you're going to be sharing books or pages of books. And if you're going to be using uh, apps or interactive content, then you'll need an iPad or an iPhone or something like that as well. The obvious, you're going to need uh, Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection. Um, and here are the connection needs. So just in review, if you're connecting from a school building, then you are pretty certain that your Wi-Fi or Ethernet should be sufficient. Um, there are some rare cases if you're in an all uh, a room with all concrete walls or you're on like that corner of the building that is the furthest away from the Wi-Fi, then you may have an issue. Um, but you can probably navigate those. Um, if you are, uh, for whatever reason, at home, a good test is if you can run uh, any sort of streaming service on a smart TV or you have children that are gamers who play like Xbox Live or things like that then you can definitely do teleconferencing. And if you have the ability to plug into Ethernet at home, I would recommend doing that because Wi-Fi, you know, can be a little bit up and down depending on the usage. And then materials. These are just kind of a basic overview of your sure. material option types. You know, some of the things that you may be using for materials. So you might be using digital content, that could be worksheets uh, that you've either downloaded or online. A lot of those come from things like Teachers Pay Teachers or if you've created Word documents or things like that. Um, also, a lot of people like to use Boom Cards. That's also a digital content. Um, you can use paper content. I know a lot of you all have resource books or um, drill books and things like that in your, in your therapy rooms, and you can project those via a document camera or you could scan those pages into your computer and save them and share them as digital content. Uh, you can use apps. So if you have apps on your iPad or iPhone that you want to use, you can share those with your session, either on Teams, Zoom, or, or some other platform. You can do face-to-face -face demo. Uh, obviously, if you're demonstrating a particular sound production or a way that you want the student to place their mouth or something like that, uh, you can change your view within Teams or Zoom so you can have the student mirror your action. So you may be doing something face to face or you may be doing a live demo. I'm going to do this and then I want you to do it the same way. So we're going to, you know, play the hokey pokey. So we're either going to do that together or, you know, I'm going to do something. You do it after me. So there's lots of options there in terms of materials. Um, we've talked a little bit in previous sessions about screen sharing. And these are kind of the steps for screen sharing via Microsoft Teams. 
Uh, I have a feeling a lot of you know how to do this by now because you've probably spent quite a few hours on Microsoft Teams lately. But if not, it's pretty simple. Whether you use Microsoft Teams or another platform like Zoom, most all of them have kind of a control bar in the center, which is where you control turning your video on and off, muting your mic, and it's also where you share um, your screen. I also included a little video here that I had shared previously, and it's a uh, demo on sharing your um, screen via Teams. If you want to access that later, you'll have this PowerPoint presentation. And then there's also one, I know there's probably an, another camp of people who use Zoom. Uh, same thing for you guys. Here are the screen sharing instructions for Zoom if you use Zoom as your platform. And then there's also a little video about uh, screen sharing on Zoom. So you can access, these are all things that we've gone over before, like I said, in introduction or 101 trainings, but I went ahead and just threw a few slides in here. So in case you were having trouble finding them, uh, you knew uh, where they would be. So what we're gonna focus on today is a therapy technique that you all might be using. Um, and this is something that is actually pretty easy to do, um, but it creates a really interactive environment and it creates uh, a lot of opportunity for you to be really engaging with your students. And so uh, this concept is called green screen therapy. I actually saw a couple of you who joined today who had virtual backgrounds or maybe even green screens behind you before you turn your cameras off. And that's really exciting. But this is a way that you can create a really engaging uh, kind of virtual environment. And it actually does not require that much setup. So you're gonna have your computer, a microphone camera. These are tools that you're already gonna have when providing telepractice to begin with. Um, but you're gonna add a green screen uh, that you're going to use as your um, kind of platform uh, or, you know, blank slate behind you. And I'm going to show you how to do this. Uh, and there's also a few links up here in the corner. There's a green screen speech therapy Facebook group uh, that has good ideas. There's little kits for purchase. And then there's a little link on how to set up green screen for therapy. So you guys can access those links later. So these are some suggested materials if you're going to use green, street, green screen for a backdrop. It should be light green, not dark green, non-reflective, and you want to try and make it wrinkle free. Um, if it's cloth, you want to stick with like a felt, polyester, nylon, lycra, muslin. Um, you can use paper or cardboard. You can use a green tablecloth. Just try not to get one that's the like real shiny kind. Um, there are like actual green screens where if you like go on Amazon and you search, you know, green screen, you'll find something that, you know, like you can shoot an action scene in a movie behind, um, if you want to get that sophisticated or you can paint a wall or an actual wall or a backdrop, uh, in the chroma key paint. So if you have, um, a wall or something that you wanted to use as your green screen backdrop, you can you can do that. So those are your options in creating this green screen. This is not very expensive. I mean, a tablecloth is like two or three dollars. Pieces of fabric, you know, very affordable. Um, so this is not a high cost option for providing therapy. And this is what it can look like. So this is a kind of a screenshot of someone who has their green screen behind them. You can see they would sit back there at their table and they've got that light green um, screen behind them set up. This is a, another example. See someone painted a wall, the green. You can see uh, these rolls. There's lots of these laying around schools for bulletin boards, the rolls of uh, paper that you guys use to put on bulletin boards or decorate rooms. Um, you can use that. Uh, you can see there's like a green screen with a stand just a piece of material. So obviously it doesn't have to be, you know, anything that sophisticated. Okay, so how are you going to set up a green screen for speech therapy? You're gonna find a blank wall space with at least six feet. You're gonna set up your table and chair. Uh, consider using a rolling chair because you're gonna need to move it side to side or point and reach to things. Uh, obviously your camera. So you can use an iPad, document camera, laptop camera, um, and then you want to cover all of your natural lighting, so your windows, so you'll get a halo effect around your head if you use anything 
other than artificial lighting. So if, you, if you've got that room where like your windows on the left side of your face, you wanna block that out while you're using green screen. Okay. Um, these are just some kind of logistics construction uh, for your green screen, green screen uh, to try and set you guys up for success. You can use command strip hooks or tension rods or clip rings. Um, however your uh, room is set up or whatever opportunity you have to set something like this up. Um, if you have, uh, you can put pockets in your green screen if you want. So things will like appear and disappear. They have to be the same color, but you could put like Velcro on the back, green sticks. You can use um, magnifying glass, flashlights. So you can use a lot of things. Um, and if you put images, background images, you need to use them in a, in a JPEG format, which is, which is a photo format. If you guys are used to using photos or pulling JPEG files off of your computer, that's a photo format in um, 16 by nine. Okay, also I included some links here with how to use virtual backgrounds. So there's one for Zoom, one for Microsoft Teams. Uh, those are live links, they're little videos you can watch if you want some instructions on uh, creating virtual backgrounds. So let's, uh, let's look at this concept live. So you guys can see uh, what this looks like when someone's using a green screen behind them. So we're going to watch this little video. I have had, I'm not exaggerating when I say about 100 people message me asking two questions. How do you make things float? And number two, how do you make images fit behind you without stretching out or missing pieces of the image? So let's start with the how do you upload an image without it being stretched. So I've already pulled up, I'm on Google here. I went to mommy speech therapy pages and let's say I wanna do B initial words. So I'm going to download this to my desktop. We're gonna go find it on my desktop. There it is. I'm going to go into this image, I'm going to make it full screen. I'm going to zoom out of the image. I'm going to screen grab the image, including borders on all sides. And then I'm going to choose my virtual background with the screenshot. And look, all of the pieces fit. Let's see what it would look like if I hadn't done that. Let's see what it would look like if I had just taken a screenshot of this vertical image without the borders. I have a suspicion it's going to be stretched. Sure is. So we've missed a lot of the image. So what we have to do is zoom out, screen grab with borders. Now to show you how we make things float. We have our green background behind us. Mine is humongous. Yours doesn't have to be, but mine is large. Um, whoa, I almost fell. Okay, so we've got our green background. Then we've got our stick wrapped in the same construction paper that I did for the background. I have my little people velcroed. And that way I can change whoever I'm wanting to play with. And I have a little box of characters that I've made on green construction paper and glued on top. So we've got our octopus, you know, our jungle characters. We've got a whole box of characters who can come out um, some of them I glued on construction paper, I mean on laminated paper, and some of them I did on cardboard. I don't recommend the cardboard. It was a pain in the butt to cut it. So that is how we make things float. So this is a person on a stick. She's visible right now, but or her stick is visible right now, but let's go to ice cream. Now she's a floating person, and she even can make me invisible. So that is how we make things float. I also make things disappear 
often by using a green t-shirt. That's the trick. So, yeah. Bye. Okay, so you can see this really, once you kind of get a hang of this, this isn't really all that hard. You're gonna be using a lot of materials that you may already have that may just require you to scan them into your computer. So it's not uh, that hard to put up a virtual background or do the green screen and you guys will get a feel for it if it's something that you wanna try. Um, I... This is actually a um, green screen activity that one of our uh, speech pathologists created. Um, her name's Jennifer Ball and she has been looking for like those little felt kits you know all summer she's been like collecting them from every store that she can find and she there's another little demo video here about how she creates like a sandwich shop for green screen okay so this is my first time recording and i just thought oh hold on one second Uh -huh. Hold on one second. Me. Flip this around for a minute. All right, and we're back. Okay, so this is my first time recording and I just thought I would record myself doing this um, for practice so I can see what I look like. Um, this is using a green screen and I have Melissa and Doug sandwich set up here and um a kitchen background with just like the cooking tabletop and i have felt um a felt green screen and i have uh, velcro on all the meat the eggs and i think oh, and um all the all the meat all the bread and the eggs so um this is what i'm going to use this took a little bit to set up so more time than what I normally typically have in between kids so I'll probably set it up and leave it for most of the day or try to do it for a block of first graders or a block of kindergartners or whatever but um I was just thinking of some fun things that we could target with this um requesting having kids um practice with carryover ordering at a restaurant ordering for their mom and dad at a restaurant um like my mom would if, if this was the restaurant my mom would get and this is a sandwich that she would get and i would just get a cheese sandwich um sequencing putting putting the sandwich together for sequencing um all your individual arctic i was just thinking um for k's i know a lot of our kindergartners don't have k's so um we could have a pita pocket oh 
over there with my egg that has a G in it, but a pita pocket with bacon, two pieces of bacon, and turkey. There's our K again. Um, and then we can have a cookie to eat for dessert. And there's our, there's my pocket. So I'm just practicing a little bit um, to see how long this is going to take to set up, see what it's like, um, see what I need to be doing, and like I just lost the egg. So, uh, but that's just a practice. Wanted to see how well it would go. Okay, here's another one. This is my um, Melissa and Doug pizza set. I have the rest of it right here. Um, it's all the same stuff, but. This is what um, I'm going to do with this one. Same thing um, for requesting the child can use a longer utterance. They can tell me, um, I like peppers. I don't like peppers. I'm still thinking on the case for some reason. We could do like, yuck, um, don't like in a long phrase. When they can say, we can do multiple syllable words for the pepperoni. But you can, they can tell me what to do. Um, get the crust, great for sequencing. And see, this is why I'm practicing. My green screen is a little bit wonky. So, it's still a little bit wonky. And now everything's falling off. I think I need to slide it down. Okay, I'll fix it later. But see, this is why I need to practice. So, all my thing, but okay, there is a reason. There is a method to my madness here. There is a reason that I use this particular video to show you uh, about green screen. So Jennifer is a, uh, she's a telespeech therapist. So she's used to providing things with telespeech, but she's kind of delving into the green screen world this year. And we said, we want to demonstrate this in real life. So this isn't the perfect demo. This isn't the, you know, the, the moment where we got it all right. I wanted you to see how oh, we had to adjust the green screen. Oh, some things fell off. Oh, my dogs are barking in the background because these are things you guys are going to experience. Um, I can show you a picture perfect version of it, but I wanted you to see maybe some of the things that you'll have to navigate if you decide to do this sort of thing. And that's okay while you're getting used to it. You know, that's okay that, you know, you don't have it um, perfect, you know, at this moment. So I wanted you to kind of see the good, the bad, and the good, the bad, and the ugly there. Um, but you can see, you can create a lot of different activities with it. And this is a picture of what this looks like when she wasn't sharing her screen. So you can see she had her sandwich materials back here on, uh, on the green screen. And when she put her virtual background up, which was a Melissa and Doug background, then it made her sandwich pieces kind of come to life in her sandwich shop. So this is what it looks like when you're not sharing. Another couple of pictures here to show you. So this is another one of our therapists. This is Benjamin or, or Mr. D as his kids refer to him. Um, this is a virtual background sharing. So, um, you know, you can see he's got his phone up and he's picking a virtual background he wants to use, or you can see that you can pick a, a custom picture or something that you've taken a screenshot of. And this is him using Lamp Words for Life. So, He's put the uh, lamp words for life on the virtual background. So if he's working with a student who's using this sort of technology, he can actually interact live with it or he can point to things or do different things that he wants um, to do uh, with this particular app that he can have it that's actually visible. The student can see it uh, while they may be working with their device. So any questions thus far about green screen? Because we're going to kind of switch gears here in just a second. 
And I tried to include lots of links and um, lots of uh, things that you can go to to kind of figure this out. I think a lot of you creative types are, um, this is gonna be a good way for you all to be kind of next level creative. Um, I've seen a lot of your speech rooms and a lot of things that, you know, you guys have built such creativity into your brick and mortar rooms. Uh, this is just another, you know, way that you can really be creative in your therapy in a virtual method. All right, no questions thus far. Okay, so I think um, if it's okay with Libby, I don't think there's any uh, restrictions, but uh, there's also a concept of creating a virtual classroom. And Annie, who's doing the uh, OTPT telepracticing session at one o'clock, her entire presentation is going to be on the creation of virtual classrooms. And although the classrooms that she's created and things like that are very uh, OT oriented or OT related, uh, it's the same information that you can translate into a virtual speech room. Uh, if you don't get a chance to access it, of course, it'll be recorded as well and you can access it at any time. But I wanted you to know that we were we were both kind of focusing on different things today. So you would get an opportunity to see two really different virtual methodologies and really two very different virtual opportunities for creativity um, that could both work you know very well for um, setting up your services for the fall so i included a couple little pictures here this is uh, miss annie's ot room and she's built in some links and all of her um all of her little shapes here her stars and all this stuff are actually interactive links uh, this is actually Annie's dog, Dex, who appears in all of Annie's virtual classroom lessons. Um, so she plugged him in there and he does reward things for the students. So if you click on him and his smiley face, then there's lots of reward things that happen um, for her students. Um, here's another example. This is Miss Tasha's sensory room. And Miss Tasha's sensory room actually has an aquarium built into it. So we might actually all need Miss Tasha sensory room at some point this year. Um, but uh, you can see she's building this soothing coral aquarium music. She's got her feeling buddies over here in the corner. Um, this is a very calming space. So she's got um, a lot of really cool things built in there. And then back to Miss Annie at the beach. So Dex is swimming. Uh, see how he always has a little star beside him? That's kind of Annie's thing for her virtual classroom. He does reward things. So the stars always mean there's a reward. And Annie has um, music rewards and such built into her um, built into her presentation that I obviously don't have the correct link for, but I think this is supposed to be a song. Um, but she has all kinds of fun stuff, you know, built in here. So these are, this is also a completely different methodology of, you know, doing something, but this is a way to create consistency. Maybe you always start in Miss Annie's OT room when you're on virtual session, we go over maybe what the lessons are going to be today. Um, you know, you can kind of build in some predictability and some routine uh, and some real interactivity, you know, there. So I just took a couple screen grabs of, uh, some of their um, sessions and they actually have tons and tons of these types of things set up that Annie's going to demonstrate um, at the one o'clock session as well. So, um, all right. Questions? Maria, you have a question about from Ashley Sudath. Uh, is, is she using Schoolology? Uh, this, uh, what I took, these pictures of virtual classroom are actually created within PowerPoint. So uh, you can create them in PowerPoint. You can create them in like if you use Google Slides. I know people who use them that way. Um, 
you could probably upload some of these to a Schoology platform. I just don't know how uh, interactive they would be, like if you would be able to build in the links and things on a Schoology platform. But you can send these things to students like via email. So like, let's say that um, you're, you don't have the opportunity to meet with this student live and we're in an all remote learning format. You could create a couple of slides and you can create lessons or uh, websites or links to worksheets or things that you want them to do. And maybe they complete them and you follow up with them later to see if they got them completed. And, you know, did you have any trouble with it? You can kind of follow up in that indirect format later. OK, when you let's see from Kelsey, when you when do you use those virtual classrooms at the beginning and end of sessions? Yeah, you can use them. You can use them live. So like uh, Annie is planning on using hers in a in a direct therapy format, but she's also planning on using hers in an indirect therapy format if needed. So if she's going to use this directly, she may start with uh, kind of back on this slide. Welcome to Miss Annie's OT room. Uh, she has a couple of different slides in, in her presentation where it has kind of in order. We're going to do these three things today. These are our three activities today, and we're going to work through them. So they go to activity one, they click by the star on decks, and they get to do a reward. And then we're going to do activity two, same thing. And that kind of gives some predictability and, you know, just setting up a, a sequence to the session. Um, if we're in an indirect format, so let's say we, we can't reach the student directly, um, we can send these to the student via email or we can send them um, in, you know, possibly other ways, depending on what sort of education platform every county is using. And um, you can, you know, have these built in as links and things so the student can access them on their own. Um, let's see. May I suggest the Bitmoji craze for educators Facebook group? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's also some some Bitmoji classroom Facebook groups that are really good. They've got some good ideas. Um, and there's a Bitmoji group for SLPs too, uh, says Rebecca Mills. So um, yeah, there's lots of, just like there's a green screen therapy group, there's a Bitmoji Facebook group. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of good ideas um, and, and different things you can find online that you don't always have to reinvent the wheel. Any other questions? All right, well, I want you guys to mark your calendars uh, for the uh, next telepracticing session, which is Friday, September 25th at 11, and we're gonna be targeting articulation in teletherapy. And um, while we, you know, answer any other questions that have that have come up during this, you know, session. Um, I want I want to make sure you guys get the QR code because Libby asked that I include that. Um, so I want to make sure that you guys get it. Um, also, you've heard me say if you've if you've attended any of the intro or 101, you know, teletherapy courses, you know, these kinds of things like virtual classroom and green screen, they're not requirements for therapy. They're not requirements for doing really good virtual therapy. Um, we just thought we would we would target these couple of things now. So while you had maybe a few days while you're trying to get organized in your schedules and how you're going to access students and when and where and all these things, you had some of these tools that you knew were, were possibilities. Um, it does not have to be this this advanced or this complex. You don't have to use any of these tools. They're just kind of more you know sophisticated options for you to be able to um, do something different or, you know, keep it creative and keep it fun for the kids. Um, so don't leave this session thinking that this is now the status quo for doing good virtual therapy because it's not. You, you actually don't need any of these things to do really good quality virtual therapy. OK, can you send the five to seven apps that you recommended for teletherapy? It was on included on another of the teletherapy sessions. Uh, yeah, Sonia, are you talking about those two little infographics that I created that uh, like the top six free apps and the top six paid apps? 